Hey guys, when I did time with my friend Kevin, um, he's a great artist. And he did a lot of help with me when I would screw up my work, he fix it, and he taught me a lot, a lot of things. We decided to do some work again together. So he does some work, I do some work on it, and stuff like that. And this is before it's signed, so I'm gonna put them out, and I'm gonna sign them personally. This is what you'll get. This is artwork. This is my art. I will sign this, I'm not sure exactly where yet. The sleeve over here. Maybe I'll put it in silver. And I'm gonna send a certificate with it. She's still alive, actually. So if she, I hope she sees it. And if she sees it and she gets in touch with me, we're gonna send her one with my signature on it. When you get it, you will be able to see her eyes are beautiful. Everything about her, she's beautiful. What gets me with these actresses and stuff, years ago, no fake lips, no fake boobs, no nothing. Just natural, just gorgeous, gorgeous women. A lot of the old Italian people would love this. Italian women and people grew up knowing who she is. This is Sophia Loren. Now it's a limited edition. I'm sure you gave somebody this as a Christmas gift. They would be in love with it. Like I said, especially um, older people, Italian people would love this. Hey guys, when I did time with my friend Kevin, um, he's a great artist, and he did a lot of help with me when I would screw up my work, he'd fix it, and he taught me a lot, a lot of things. We decided to do some work again together. So he does some work, I do some work on it, and stuff like that. And this is before it's signed, so I'm gonna put them out, and I'm gonna sign them personally. This is what you'll get. This is artwork. This is my art. I will sign this, I'm not sure exactly where yet. The sleeve over here, maybe I'll put it in silver. And I'm gonna send a certificate with it. She's still alive actually. So if she, I hope she sees it. And if she sees it and she gets in touch with me, we're gonna send her one with my signature on it. When you get it, you will be able to see her eyes are beautiful. Everything about her, she's beautiful. What gets me with these actresses and stuff, years ago, no fake lips, no fake boobs, no nothing. Just natural, just gorgeous, gorgeous women. A lot of the old Italian people would love this. Italian women and people grew up knowing who she is. This is Sophia Loren. Now it's a limited edition, I'm sure you gave somebody this as a Christmas gift, they would be in love with it. Like I said, especially um, older people, Italian people would love this. Hey guys, when I did time with my friend Kevin, um, he's a great artist. And he did- Your life, Sammy. Hey guys, here we are on Monday live again. You know, I put out a little, it's a commercial, but I thought that you would look at that and see it and, you know, instead of just sitting there listening to music. And uh, so uh, if you like that idea or what I just did, you know, maybe we'll put other things out, you know, while you guys are waiting. So, uh, so let's get started. You know, let me start like this. You know, this is the week of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is coming up on the Thursday. And um, to me, and I think most people, it's such a festive time of the year. It's Thanksgiving, you eat the turkey. I used to have, you know, we used to have Italians, we have an pasta, and then we have uh, uh, pasta and stuff like that. And then the turkey comes out, ham with pineapple on it, made really good. You know, all of these things, and then after that was done, you, you know, full, sat down, the whole family was together. It was such a beautiful time. Then we would eat nuts, they'd come out with nuts and fruit. And uh, the chestnuts, you remember the song, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. So the music was playing in the background, kids were running around. It was such a great time, uncles, aunts, cousins, you name it. It was a beautiful time. Um, and then the, you know, immediately they were starting to decorate the windows and the house and the tree, the Christmas tree went up, uh, Hanukkah lights 
for my Jewish neighbors and stuff like that. Um, so many beautiful things uh, would happen, and then Christmas, and then, you know, in New York, the ball would drop, and it was, you know, the new year came in. It was such a beautiful, beautiful time. And uh, I still feel those feelings, you know, towards the family. It's just, I, I drove around over here in Arizona. There's houses that are decorated with lights and stuff like that. Even here, it's not, you know, you don't, it's not the time of the year where it's snowing and it's cold and stuff like that. It is a little cooler, but um, it's a great time of the year. And that's what I feel right now. We're getting together. I put this little video out. I'm starting to do my art again with my friend Kevin, and uh, he's gonna. We're gonna work together, and we do. We make I think beautiful art together. You get a you know small little frame around it, and uh, it's a beautiful gift. Um, we, I think we were asking two and change, two and a quarter, and uh, we gave. You know, I told him for Christmas from now until the new year. We're going to reduce it down to $180. So if you wanted to buy somebody a gift or, you know, especially her, a lot of the old timers, uh, people, men and women, grew up in her era and her time. I did, so I enjoyed doing that with my friend. And uh, he's going to be doing artwork with me all the time now. Um, I got a little older. My hand shakes a little bit. I don't see as well. He's still really good. So we work together on it. And uh, we're going to do a lot more. Um, I won't talk about them right now, but you'll see them from time to time. When they come out, I'll put out a video like that, like we're doing, so you'll see their, their original pictures and what we did, you know. And uh, I think it's artwork, and it's a beautiful thing. And uh, I'll personally sign them. And uh, I'll be 79 in March, so wait a while until I die. With this, you'll, you'll, it'll be worth a lot of money. <laughs> so don't even worry about it. And, uh, you know, I want to throw a shout out to a friend of mine, uh, uh, Sean Miller. Uh, on the 24th, it's his birthday. He'll be 38 years old. He calls me, breaks my chops all the time. So I wanted to give him a shout out. And uh, so I'm going to go into the questions now, I guess, right? Can I go into the questions? Possibly. You want to do the questions? Or do you want to tell them what you're grateful for? What am I grateful for? That's a good question. I hate when, I mean, it puts me on the spot <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for so many things. I'm grateful for being here. What I went through, three mafia wars, all of that shit, all kinds of people died, friends of mine in prison, out of prison, who was dead of not only gun, gun uh, violence, but uh, cancer, heart attacks, all kinds of things. So I'm grateful for a lot of things. I'm grateful to be here with my family, with my team, uh, Anna and uh, Amina. Yay. They're great. They're working with, uh, with me. Um, and we, we do. We have a lot of laughs. We, we, we have a good, a good vibe, especially now. And uh, so there's a lot of good things. Uh, there's a lot of things for me to be grateful for. There's so many people, like, I'm not going to mention all your names, you know who I'm talking about. Uh, so let me start with Betty Ann, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go to everybody, but she's a, spe order. Yeah, she's, a spe <laughs> she's a special friend. So she, is, she's uh, not in the chat yet. El Gato <laughs> and uh, uh, James. Uh, yeah, there's just so many of them, I'm not going to start saying names. I'll be here in a half hour saying names. But all of you guys out there listening, attending my Q&As, you know, I really wish you could feel and have a great holiday, like feel like I feel about it right now, and feel the same way, and have a great holiday, you and your family. I know a lot of you personally by now. I know you'll have this problems in, the, in some of your families, health issues with kids or mothers or fathers or something, and my heart goes out to you. This is the time to get them around, especially if it's an older person and they're sick, Give them the love now, this whole holiday season. And uh, so uh, now I'll get to uh, the Q&As, the one I missed from last week. Yes. Amina specializes in that. <laughs> it's 
special <laughs> Thank you, Sammy. Okay, first of all, let's give a couple of shout outs um, to Birmingham Rugs, Tim201, James. Um, who else wants a shout out? Give them a shout out, Sammy. Yeah, a shout out to all of you guys. I love you guys. Who'd I just say? I don't have a clue. <laughs> 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 Again. <on the> spot. <laughs> Again. <laughs> okay, let's get into the questions. Okay, so we have Frank Logan. What were your thoughts when you told Paul you were going to Neil's and he said you're supposed to be on our side? Yeah, I, it was it was very su shocking to me because to me the family was the boss, the underboss, the concierge, all the captains, all the maid guys. We're a family, so we're on one side. I didn't get that. You, you know, you're on my side, and um, you know I didn't question it too much, but in my head it didn't sit right. You know, side. We're not. We're on. We're on the same side. We're all on the same side, and we're supposed to be anyway. So, but I did go down and see Neil anyway, and wish him a happy holidays and stuff like that. Tato went with me. It was the right thing to do. Uh, there, there's, there, there's nothing wrong in life when it comes to respect. If you're going to show somebody respect, there is nothing wrong with that. I mean, if there's another side and they're your enemy, then they're your enemy. You don't have to show them respect unless you're conning them or try to suck them in or something like that. But um, if you're on the same side, a family member, arguments, arguments, all that bullshit is put on the side especially during these kind of holidays and stuff like that. Okay, we have Tubble of Oz. Sammy, why did the Lucchese family carry out the Frankie D bombing with Frankie Hearts also right there? Shouldn't someone have been punished for that? Absolutely, but we didn't know who to punish. We didn't know who did it right away. Or we were on the war path. We were definitely gonna punish them. It took a long time to find out I found out it was gas pipe, Chin Giganti, um, but it took a very, very long time to find that out. I really didn't find out too much about gas pipe. I was friendly with him for years. We grew up in the same neighborhood. When I was in prison, I did a video, and uh, I was trying to get to in the same yard as him. I was going to kill him years and years later because of that. So I would have punished him. but. Um, I never got the opportunity to, to do it. But there's a rule in Gozanostra, we don't use bombs. They do that in Italy, and uh, we're not Italy. We're here in the United States, and our rule is we don't use bombs. So. Okay. We have Azure. Where did DB's millions and mansions go? DB's millions and mansions? Mm-hmm. I would imagine that it went to his family. Uh, there was, you know, there was no way to get that from anybody, from his family. That was all personal. I mean, things that he had, you know, that are streetwise, like his, he ran the, the Teamsters 282. When he died, I started to run it. Um, things like that. I guess people who owed, he owed, owed him money went uh, south and then it, it, somebody grabbed it or whatever. I mean, I don't know. His mansions, I don't know about mansions, if he lived in mansions, but I would assume that his family had the mansions and the homes. We don't go scooping people's private property and homes up to, to, to when people are killed. We, we don't do that. I mean, generally, what belongs to the mafia they'll get it. A Shylock business, that's a street business. They'll take that. Um, but other things that he had, I don't think anybody took that. Whoever he was partners with in the pornography, and he wasn't in pornography, he was in distribution of pornography. He didn't make movies, he was a, you know, a distributor. So I, I don't know about any of that. Okay, we have 360 Steven. Where did the mob get their guns? They get them in stores just like you get them. But, uh, and then there's, the, years ago there was these places they put on these events, you could buy guns, swap, you didn't need a license, you could buy it, 
People went there with phony ID and bought it, sold it to the mob guys. Um, it came from overseas. A lot of times it would come overseas. Guns would come into the country, we would buy them. You couldn't get a, a legitimate silencer if you stood on your head. But they did sell them overseas. Now, people bought them overseas, brought them in, and sold them. So we had those legitimate silences. And then we had these um, places, I forgot what they called them, they do, uh, you know, they make all kinds of things. They make, I, I forgot the word for it, but we made our own in certain places. They weren't as good as the professional ones, but they were just as good. Okay. We have Mets fan. Sammy, did you have a personal table at, I can never pronounce this, is it Rayo's or Rayo. Rao's? It's Rayo's. Okay. Since there are only eight in the entire place and the regular street person can't get a table. Yeah, they were given to mob guys. I was offered a table there. I never took it. I never even went there. I didn't like that, you know, show offy shit. You went to a restaurant and that was your table. You could give. I, I never bought into that. Um, regular people couldn't get a table, but I walk in and take books. I, I never was into that. So I didn't have a table. I refused it. I told them, thank you. I didn't want it. And uh, uh, I never even went there. It was a great restaurant. I buy their sauce. They make sauce now and stuff from time to time. If my son is cooking, of course, I, I, his sauce is better. And I'm not just saying that because of uh, we're not selling our sauce. My son's a great chef, and it's fresh sauce. So, But other than that, as far as any kind of bottle or canned sauce you could buy, I think Rayo's is great. It's the closest thing to legitimate you know, sauce. Yeah, Gerard's a good cook. Gerard is very good. Very good. Okay, we have Dave Van Etten. How did your relationship with Gas Pipe change after Paul bit the dust? It didn't. I grew up in Benson Heights, Brooklyn with him all my life. Uh, I knew him, he was in a different family, but I knew him very well. Uh, he was right out of Benson Heights, Brooklyn. And he hung out in the 19th hole on 86th Street, which was right, right near us. So I always knew him. Um, John didn't get along with him or Vic Amuso. And every time we had to straighten something out, John would always get frustrated. Go straighten out with your fucking friend. Get this thing straightened out. And so I always would meet with him. Uh, it, once I found out about the bomb with Frankie and Chico, once we found out, I hated him. And I was going to kill him, like I said, in prison. But before that, I wasn't chummy chummy with him, but we grew up in the same neighborhood. We saw each other multiple, multiple times. Um, and I got along with him. Great. We have Steve Jackson. Hey, Sammy, where did Mafia guys get their guns for use in the life? We answered that. And what would happen to them after a crime? Are they tossed in the river, et cetera? What do, you, what do they do? It's not a river, but we, we had the ocean right there in Brooklyn, and, you know, going over the Brooklyn Bridge, Manhattan Bridge. Sometimes the car would just pull over, and they would choom, right over the bridge because the water's really deep there. And other places we had that were, you know, water. In Coney Island, they had this muddy, slushy, shitty water. And uh, it was like a, almost like a quicksand underneath the mud. We would throw it in there. It would suck the gun right down. Nobody went there. Nobody went to clean it. And even if you found them, there's no fingerprints. There's nothing left on it. It's all salt water. They rot. They build up salt all around it. It's useless. But you're not going to get caught with it because they could match the bullets with whatever. So even if they found it there, they still don't know whose gun it was. So, but we did get rid of them. OK, real quick before I hand the mic over to Anna, give quick shout outs. There's a slew of them. Mad Koo, Matt, I think it's Goya, Peter Allen MMA, Xavier James, Larry Fishkine, Demas, Podo Prigora, Kabbalah 111. Uh, Carlo, 1234, John Smith, Melissa, Phil Philip Spade, and Mrs. Bandito FPV, who says she's spending her first Thanksgiving without her mom. Can you well, remember all those names? Give it give right back. 
you know, I, I, <laughs> she, I, I know she was going to ask me to mention all the names. Um, she <laughs> lost me at the third name. But uh, listen to you, sweetheart, that you lost your mom. <coughs> it's a sad thing. But you have to, uh, a guy asked me today in the gym the same exact question. And uh, I answered him. Um, don't think of anything negative with your mom. Any arguments you had, think of all the good things. Think she's in a much, much better place. She's not suffering if she was sick. Um, and keep all of those good memories. And every holiday, if it happened right now, before the holidays, you could think of her in a good place and a pleasant place and enjoy life. It happens. We're all going to die. It's just a matter of not when or how. It's a matter of when. Uh, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with dying. It comes a time, you know, these kids who are dying from overdoses and, or a murder or something like that or a rape or something, that's more shocking. But if she's an older person, it's, you know, she's in a better place. She's not suffering. And remember all the good times. I think back about my mother and father. I don't remember anything that was painful. I didn't have many arguments with them, but I don't remember anything. I remember all the good things. I always wish I could have went fishing with my dad or to a baseball game more than I did. I was an asshole. I'm always busy. I'm always doing this. So, uh, but I remember all the good things. When I think about them, nothing but good memories come to my head. If there was an argument, there must have been some. I don't even remember them. I don't want to think of them. So it, they're in a better place. And uh, my mom and dad and my family are probably waiting for me. I'll join them soon enough. You will join your mom soon enough. She'll be waiting for you. You'll see her again. Mm -hmm. Take my word. But stay strong. And uh, it's, it's tough. But everybody goes through this. Remember that. And just remember the good things. Thank you, Sammy. OK, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Anna. Oh, Lily, Lily Rose. Say hi to Lily Rose. Give Lily Rose a shout out. She's like five. Oh, hi, Lily Rose. <laughs> your, your youngest supporter. My youngest supporter. I'm waving to Lily Rose. <laughs> yeah, so sweet. That was beautiful, Sammy. That's right. I believe that, too. They're, they're waiting for us on that. Yeah. Yeah, all, all the good people, your friends, everybody. Yeah. Every time I lost a friend, I would always say, save a seat for me, bro. Yeah, I'll, I'll see you there. So, and I believe that happens or whatever happens. You know, good, bad, or indifferent. Everybody's going to die one way or another. Car accidents, so many ways we can die. Um, our lifespan, men uh, have a lifespan of 73. Women have a lifespan of 83. So today, I think I'm going to declare myself a woman so I can live to 83. You identify? <laughs> Are we changing pronouns on all the socials? Yeah, I'm going to change the Jeez. pronouns. So <laughs> That's awesome. Let's see. You know, Redman, uh, one of your rthing.tv uh, followers, he had some really good questions. And he's got a, it's a little bit of a long one, but um, I'd love to read it. That's God. okay? Go okay. So Redman is asking, Sammy, you mentioned before how Chin didn't want to kill you at first but then changed his mind and put you back on the hit list he we wanted we know he wanted john dead as well looking back on the surface i think chin wanted everyone to believe he was trying to kill john and you for killing paul but i think his real motive was that he wanted the gambinos under his control he did this with the philadelphia family and even had vic amuso and gas pipe under his thumb I think he knew if he killed John, you wouldn't be under his thumb. So he needed you dead as well. Maybe have a guy like Jimmy Brown, who he could influence to run the family. I think ultimately he wanted complete power over the entire commission. Let me know your thoughts and happy Thanksgiving. Listen, you hit it right on the head. You know, there was people in a, in a room where he was talking. And the first time he said, I think we could work with Sammy. I like him. We're not going to kill him. We could talk to him. A while later, he said, Sammy's too fucking loyal to this guy. And he'll fake it, you know, it is what it is, but he'll come at us. I know him. He's 
he is going to come at us. So I have to get, we have to get rid of him. So he, that's why he had changed his mind. He hated John Gotti. There's a, an indictment of somebody, Bobby Manna, who's in prison. I'm trying to get a, a pardon for him. Uh, I'm going to make a statement about him in a little bit. But um, um, they got caught on tape plotting the murder of John Gotti. Chin gave Bobby Manor and them. He was indicted. It's not, it's not new news. He was indicted for it. He's doing time for, it, for that part of it. He had other charges, but that was part of the charges. Conspiracy to kill John Gotti. He hated John Gotti. John Gotti knew that. And, uh, but, and Chin had, he was behind the thing in Philadelphia. He was behind a lot of things. I believe his plan was to take over everything. I think you hit the nail on the head with the, most of your conversation, but that's the way it was with uh, what he said and did about me. He changed his mind. He's too fucking goddamn loyal. And he's got balls, he'll come at us. And we gotta take him out. And, um, but he never had the opportunity to take me out. So here I am, and he's gone. So maybe I'll bunk into him again. But I, I, I'm gonna be honest, even with that mentality, I understand it, I respect it. He was right. I would have retaliated. So putting the bullshit aside, I, I, he was right. Um, I'm not mad at him. Um, if I seen him, I had a tremendous respect for him. He was goes in Austria. 100%, and taking over from John, he hated John with a passion, and other families and things. He was a tough bastard, and he wanted to, any loose ends he goes in Austria, he wanted to get rid of. He wanted to make it back what it's supposed to be. I don't disrespect him for that, but um, yeah, he wanted to take over everything. Thank you, Sammy. Um we just got a chat in and it's it's kind of sad and I um, kind of touching on what you just touched on about people waiting for you on the other side a uh, loyal follower in the chat for you Sammy James said he lost um, he lost his two-year-old son and wants to know if Sammy can say a few words and he wants to know if his son is waiting for him two years old two years old he is he is you're choking me up, James, with this right now. I just got to take a deep breath. Take your time, Sammy. He is, he is waiting for you. That's horrible, but you know, it happens. Like I said, we all die sooner or later. You know, he, he's, he's going to get special attention. There's lots of women up there. They'll see him. He's a little guy, they'll take care of him. Yeah. There's a lot of people who are gonna love him. And when you pass away, you'll see him. Um, it's, it's hard to say, remember all the good times, but remember him as a baby, putting him in your arms, holding him, hugging him. I have to go on with this. I can't. I'm choking. I know. The fuck I up. know. Thank you, Sammy. Yeah. James, Sammy's with you. We're here with you, and prayers for you and your family. Yes. <sighs> uh, Bill Curtis from Arthing TV. Uh, hello, all. Just wondering where you, why you were sent to the Supermax in Colorado. If you already explained, I apologize. I just know the Boston Marathon bomber is there, and I don't think you would be there with that level of criminals. Anyways, have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Bill. Um, there's really no reason for me to be there with the crimes that I got busted with. You know, before in my life, maybe, yeah, but the crime that I went there for was being uh, ecstasy bullshit charge. And I think they wanted to break me. I did an interview with the warden. Even the warden, when I talked to him, I didn't belong there at that particular time of my life. Maybe earlier when I got pinched on all those murders, yes. But later, no. So, and that's what gave me strength, um, is I knew I didn't belong there. I knew they wanted to break me. And I said, fuck this, you're not gonna break me. And it gave me the strength to get through six and a half years of my life in a hole. 
Um, it, that's one of the things. There was a bunch of things. I talked with the warden. He's retired now. He's helping me with uh, prison reform, uh, drug abuse, and stuff like that. And uh, we have quite a few people. We just put out some more stuff that I think we actually pushed. I don't want to take credit for it, but we, I think me and the warden and a few other people pushed certain situations that they're now giving compassionate release more often. Um, there was one of Roy DeMeo's guys. Now, I, this is the closest thing to a serial killer. I forget his fucking name, Joe something or other. And they're letting him out on a compassionate release. If they can let him out on a compassionate release, this guy's the closest thing, and I hate to say it because he's coming out and he's gonna start his life, but he's the closest thing to a serial killer. Roy DeMeo was a serial killer. The twins, he's one of the twins, is getting out. If you can let him out, and I'm not against it, if that's what you want to do, but let Bobby Manor out, let Vicar Musso out. They're old, older than him, and dying. And they're not as dangerous. So let, it, let them out too. That's what we talk about with the warden. You can't cherry pick. If this is your law and this is your rule, Guy is up in age, guy got 30 something years, and this, this kid who's coming out, kid, he's not a kid. He may even be older than me. But uh, I think he's about my age. But if you're letting them out, you gotta go across the board. There's black guys, I talked about the guy, Pop, who was with the weatherman. He's a black guy, I loved him. He, we used to play chess all the time. I used to play cards with him. He was a great guy. He was in almost 40 fucking years. They, he got busted with some white people too. The white people got out and they became, uh, what do you call that? Uh, when they're working in colleges and universities. Oh, professor? Professors and stuff yeah. like that. H how did that, f how the fuck you do that for them and not pop? Yes, he killed a cop. But he's no, they, they belong to the same group. They were putting bombs, they were shooting things and people. They all did the same thing. You left half of them out who were white after a long period of time, but not him. And the guy I did time with him, he's harmless. He can do time with, he can live with me if he wants to live with me for a while. So, I mean, that, that we go back to that, you know, f fairness in sentencing, fairness in letting people out. You can't cherry pick. We'll let him out, but not him. We'll let that one out, but not that one. And the warden, if you watch my interview, is 100% in agreement with that. So I give this warden a lot of kudos for what he is. A brave man. He talked. He took heat. I thought I was going to take heat. They're saying, oh, he's sitting with a warden. I didn't take no heat. And if I did, I don't care. And he took heat. And he don't care. Because right is right, wrong is wrong. So let's go forward from there. Okay. Thank you, Sammy. Uh, Francisco, your guy, um, he wants to know, did you have any friends in the Chicago outfit? Um, I, I knew some of them by name and stuff like that. I, I really didn't have any friends in the Chicago outfit, and I really didn't do anything with them. Um, I, when, they, when Al Capone was around, it was obviously older than me. It was a little bit before my time. And when I came into play, um, he, was, he was already gone. Most of them were gone. I really didn't know too many of them. I had conversations with Tato, I had conversations with Carl about uh, you know, some of the mob guys out there, uh, Sam Giancana, mm -hmm. um, he was a powerhouse. I didn't know him, but I heard conversations between Carl and Tato. Not the actual conversation, but Tata would tell me he had conversations with Carl about Sam Giacana wow. with the Kennedy thing and a whole bunch of stuff. So, but I didn't know them personally, no. Nice, thank you. Uh, Brad Blair in the Super Chat with a weekly envelope for you. Just checking in, boss. I'm currently doing university classes for business, so salute and thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Slick Rick 757 in the super chat. Our friend named Dustin just woke up from the hospital. Please send him some positive vibes. Dustin, I wish you the best of luck. 
you're coming out at a great time. It's the holidays. Enjoy the food. Enjoy your family. Enjoy life. Steve Jackson in the Super Chat. Hey, Sammy, random question, I know, but the coffee guy inside the Ravenite Club, any good stories about him, and did you guys give him tips? Um, I guess maybe some people gave him tips. Uh, Norman is, it was his name. He actually did a piece of work. He's not really a coffee boy. He, you know, he was the coffee guy. You know, coffee boy is like uh, in that movie, Goodfellas, is like a jerk off. He wasn't a jerk off, he was a stand up guy. He did a piece of work. Um, he would stand up. That apartment that was bugged, that was his aunt. He would make the arrangements for John Gotti to go up into that apartment. You know, John would tell Norman, get your aunt, you know, give us some money, let her go shopping. He wanted to use the apartment. And that's where John got caught on all the tapes. So uh, Norman was uh, a good guy. Um, I don't think I ever gave him a tip. Uh, the, 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 um, <laughs> the more I think about it, you know, he was just there. It, was like, it wasn't just like a coffee boy. It was like one of the guys. Mm -hmm. And he was making the coffee. But I knew he was a stand-up guy. And yeah. I didn't want to tip him like he was, you know. You're like, don't eat yellow snow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Steve Jackson. Jay Marie in the super chat. Boss, did you ever throw holiday parties for the crew? If so, do you have any good memories? Oh, we I threw tremendous parties. I I took a, a not only for the crew, but yeah, it was mostly my crew. But I took a catering hall, and I did a Christmas party. I had somebody dress up like Santa, and and, and all the kids, because everybody we invited came with their families. And I had all kinds of gifts that we bought and stuff. And I actually got in trouble. We had about 400 people, 500 people. And uh, John got mad at me. He said, bro, you know, you throw parties, 10, 12, 15 people, four, four 500 people, bro. It, it annoyed him. It, again, John was a narcissist. He didn't like anybody outshining him. I didn't mean to outshine him or do anything. I just invited not only my family, but my crew and their families, friends, and it just wound up being a ton of people. I didn't plan, you know, to be a big shot to throw a big party, but I was just looking at the positive side. I, I bought actually live trees, had them decorated. A company came in, decorated the trees, decorated the hall, and it was outrageous. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of family members or guys who their families are still alive they're gonna remember that, that uh, you know, mm -hmm. Christmas party. So, and I learned my lesson. I did that twice. One time I threw a 4th of July party on where I was living in, in Bullshead in, in Staten Island. And uh, we had, like anybody could come, word went out. And I figured we're gonna have 50, 100 people maybe. We had 1,500 people that made the newspapers and everything. John, John was fucking so upset. I mean, it, it just went. I I couldn't even believe where where you know people were coming from. They were coming from all over the place, oh, wow. different families. You know, Staten Island's got a lot of mob guys who live there, so they heard I had a party. I know, Sammy. Let's go with the kids, and and they came down. They were you know weren't invited. I didn't invite people. I just let it. It's an open block party, and I I didn't I didn't think it was going to be like that. Um, it was great. So those, I learned on those two parties not to throw big parties anymore. <laughs> I mean, how do you feed everybody? Is everybody drinking? Oh, we had food. We sent play, people down to, to uh, buy stuff when it started blowing up. I had a, an ice cream guy to, with a truck, and he would give everybody, you know, I paid him so much, and he would give everybody ice cream for nothing. He left twice and came back, reloaded oh, his truck. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I didn't expect it. We had, you know, people barbecuing, street guys who were barbecuing, giving people hamburgers and things for nothing. But we ran out of everything. You know, yeah. my house was like, a, it was like a circus. Awesome. <laughs> you know, everybody was coming into that house. And then I put a couple of guys by the door and I told guys, don't let people in. The house isn't for sale, bro. It's, you know, I have people coming in and walking all around my house, looking at the house. So they blocked it. My daughter came to me and said, Dad, 
there's two guys standing by the door, they won't let me in the house. <laughs> so I took that, I said, it's my daughter, she can get it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was like crazy. Your goon squads not let me in the house. Da. Yeah, yeah. I love how you guys call each other da. Like there's no D at the end. You guys are just da. Da. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny too because you would have celebrities show up, like Frankie Valley at, at Gerard's Christmas. Yeah, yeah. My, That's Gerard's. Awesome. Yes. Party. And we had Frankie Valley. And, uh, you know, a lot of people came around. John Gotti came to that, my son's party that day with a, a mob of guys. My daughter's Sweet 16 party, the same thing. You know, there was a ton of people. I rented an entire disco for our Sweet 16 party. So I did throw a few parties, come to think of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. For somebody who doesn't drink at all, you like right. to party. Right. That's awesome. Let's see, Jack Marlone in the chat um, asked a couple questions. He said, for when you go on a hit, do you prefer a pistol or a revolver? They're one and the same, uh, but, but an automatic weapon has, you know, the, the clip underneath. They could jam. A revolver can't jam. Uh, if, I'm, if I have an automatic weapon, um, I'm always packed up with a, with a revolver, uh, with the bullets in the chamber. That, that never backs up. So I would have the, 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 the other gun in my hand, uh, and I'd have the, the revolver in my waist, if this thing ever jammed. You know, me and Joe Vitale went on a stick up and I had uh, one of those automatic, nine millimeter automatic. And we were gonna go on a stick up and uh, we had masks and stuff and we stole a car. And we stopped at a light and we were fixing and getting ready and this and a car pulled right up next to us and a guy hanging out of the window with a rifle screaming, pull, pull over. And I, I went like this, I put my hand up, and uh, Joe Vitale told me, Sammy, hit it. I turned around, the guy turned around, and I put the gun out and pulled the trigger and nothing. Oh, click, click, nothing. My, I was sweating, and as he turned, I hit it. That's the guy, me and my friend Joe Vitale got hit, it's a long story, I won't talk about it. I did a video about it a long time ago. Uh, maybe I'll put it out again, um, if you guys wanna hear it. Um, so that scared the shit out of me. So I, I, I always had a revolver with me. Mm. Anytime I went on a, a thing. Sometimes I only had a revolver, but if I did have an automatic, it's an eight or nine shot or whatever it is, um, I would have a revolver too. Nice. Awesome. Thank you, Sammy. He had one more. Jack had one more question. He said, um, was Gas Pipe a cocaine user? Was he on drugs or? Gas Pipe? Mm-hmm. Um, I, re I really don't know. I can't say for sure. I don't, you know, he could have. Um, he was a drug dealer. He had drugs. But I don't remember him getting high. Mm. So I don't really know if he was a user of it. I know he sold it, but I don't know if he used it. Um, you know, mm -hmm. he was a fucking half, and another guy who was, became like a half a serial killer, yeah. a nut job. But uh, he was a smart guy, and and he was pretty grounded. He, you know, smart, he was tough. Um, but I, I don't remember him as being a user. You know, I'm, I wasn't a user, so mm -hmm. a lot of times a guy who uses is not going to talk to another guy who's not a user. I was an underboss. He was an right. underboss. So I you know, we don't discuss things like that. Like I got high list, now he wouldn't tell me that because we're not really not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but I, I, don't, I can't really say for sure he was. Nice. Sam, you're so cute moving your little feet around on the ground. You can see my feet? <laughs> you can't see your feet, but you're just like making little pirouette circles or a little, yeah. you're so I don't cute, have my babe. shoes on. I just got my feet, my little feet she's sticking out. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Bill C in the super chat. Would you ever have Joe Biden for your next guest? I think it would be great for ratings. And what would your first question be? It would be a riot. Joe Biden as my guest. <laughs> and my first question. 
Duh. <laughs> <laughs> what planet are you on, Mr. Biden? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it really is, you know, the, the thing is, I've heard this so much, I've seen it so much. This guy's not the president, really he's not. He's, he's, I don't know who's the president behind him, the Clintons, Obama, mm -hmm. pulling his strings. The guy can't think, he can't walk around, he can't do anything. I, I don't think he makes these decisions. Uh, the hyena <laughs> might be in charge. We did it, Joe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, I just Cringe. can't even believe, you know, I, I sometimes I think about it, I say, the, a lot of people make jokes about it. And I think, and I lay back a little bit and I say, it's a sin. These are people running our country. It's, it's, it's not a joke. It's not even funny. I mean, it's a disgrace. And what we must look like to the rest of the world, we look like clean, clowns. Now, who's that guy, the, Chinese, the Korean guy from North Korea, Kim Jong Un, or whatever his name is. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Kim Jong Un, or whatever his name was. <laughs> he turns around, he's got a picture on Instagram, maybe you guys saw it, and he's smiling and he's got two of his hands out pointing like this. Oh no, like this, with his fingers up, and he's saying, Who's laughing now? Yeah. Like we laughed at him, like he's a whack job, look at our president. Mm -hmm. What a disgrace. Yeah. These are presidents goofing on us. like. You oh, know, yeah. it is a disgrace. Did you see all the Chinese flags in San Francisco when he was visiting, <clears throat> the Chinese president was visiting? Chinese came into California. Now I'm gonna get in trouble with this. I, I, I know my <laughs> California friends. Uh, they showed it. There's lines and lines of people, hundreds of people. They have Chinese flags, red flags, all of this stuff. And four, five, six police cars, I guess he's in the middle car, and another four, five, six cops all over the place to protect him, of course. He's a president of a country. Not one American flag. Are they fucking kidding? This shirt here was given to me. This is veterans. I'm a military guy. I'm patriotic about this country. Not one person with an American flag in the, in the hundreds of people what the fuck is wrong with California? I don't care if you had you know, his flag and our flag, two of them waving it together. We're friends. All right. But now one person had an American flag. I don't know if it was a rule that they can't have it. I know this Newsom guy, the governor, is a fucking bum, out and out bum. We have people in this country in big positions who hate us, he, they hate our own country. How would the fuck could we not fall apart? We're putting in people who fucking hate our country, our history, everything about us, they hate. I mean, we have forefathers, people, when I was around the Vietnam War, the, the World War II, I was just born, but uh, people fought and died for our freedoms. And they're throwing that out the window every single day. And they're belittling them that they lost their lives for our country. Now I'm supposed to be a mafia, I'm supposed to be a bad dude. And it really, really breaks my heart to see this. That's the first thing I noticed. Not one American flag, not one, not one fucking person. Now, what was it, were they told not they can't have a flag? Even if I was told, I would say, fuck you, it's, I, it's my flag. I'm gonna hold it. First of all, I wouldn't even be there. I don't give a fuck if he comes in and who he is. Um, he's really not in love with us, but we're honoring him like, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, then, and then we go and we, we're honoring all these things about Palestine and all this other shit. I, and, and we're knocking Jews. They're part of our country. They're, they're our people. They're our biggest and best ally. Yeah. Are you condoning what was done to them? I don't know. Did you see the kid trying, the Jewish kid trying to walk through the Harvard campus and all the pro-Palestinian people were messing with him and just completely just, ugh. I, I see it and I, 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 it breaks my heart because I just don't understand this at all. 
And if this is what they're teaching in colleges and universities, I don't want my kids or grandchildren to go to college or university. Go be a carpenter, a plumber, mm -hmm. learn a trade. Because you're going to come out of these colleges twisted. You're standing there against us on lines fighting against Israel and fighting against our own country. And I think Al I Israel is a very strong, strong ally. And me, personally, I know a ton of Jewish people. I grew up with them. I'm friends with them. I was in the military with them. Bro, I don't like it. It really, really turns me off. You're going to stand there and ridicule them? Some people flew into their country and did horrible, horrible things. Now, that's war. You're declaring a war. Now, they're going to retaliate, and, and a lot of horrible things are going to happen because bombs, guns, they have no vision. They, they just kill. They don't know if they're men, they're women, children. It happens. But you started this war. <laughs> but we're condemning Israel for defending themselves and shooting bombs. We did that when we were attacked in Pearl Harbor, everywhere. What do you normally do? You're attacked by another country, you're going to retaliate. Japan, we, we dropped two atomic bombs, not once, twice. When that bomb hit, it killed 100,000 people, men, women, and children, in two seconds. We cheered. We won the war. Would we be happy if they came in and they won the war? Once you start a war, that shit happens. I don't sympathize with them. So I, I, don't, I don't know what this country is turning into, really. There's so many different issues, so many different things. The thing with the border, I think it's up to over 10 million people. That's an invasion. That's not a couple of people running across the border. That's an invasion. And they're not Mexicans. They're everything but Mexicans. Well, some Mexicans too, but mostly they're from all over the world. They're actually even knowing that there's actual terrorists coming through that border. And the cops don't stop them because they're not allowed. So we're someday going to have, in the very near future, a little uprising. And a lot of people are going to die. We're going to be angry and we'll go after the people who did it. But we're allowing this to happen. Don't be shocked someday if they get together and they kill tons of us. So Absolutely. I, they I said the know. sleeper cells were just growing and growing. With I really, really hate to get into these political mm -hmm. things, but... I don't know. I don't, I don't know what else to say about things like that, just that I don't understand it. There's good people on both sides. That's what happens in wars. You know, it happens all over the place. People are fighting for their land back. What about the Indians? They lost their land. Should we give it back to them? Or should they run around and kill us because we took it 100, 200 years ago? I mean, it's too late. So certain things, it's too late. My father taught me that. Go forward, don't go backwards. I heard a guy today talking on television, a white guy, a political guy. And he said, before Obama, I thought racism was gone. Black and white were intermarrying. They're in everything, congressmen, senators. I, I thought it was over from years and years and years ago when it was horrible. Obama made it 10 times worse. That's all you hear now is race stuff. You know, I told you in the gym today when I went and somebody lost a father and I spoke to them, mm -hmm. it was a black guy. And he was showing respect for me, I was showing respect for him. This racist shit, you say something, it's, everything is racist, homophobic. I got homophobics in my family. I got, not homophobics, I got gay people in my family. So, I don't give a shit. I love them anyway. Um, but um, I just don't understand this whole shit. So you're gonna go from one extreme to accept it, to another extreme where a man turns around and identifies as a woman, and he's a woman, okay? 
you could do that too. I don't give a fuck. You could wear a dress. You could do what you want. But to go in women's rooms and go to the bathroom mm -hmm. or compete against women in women's sports, I mean, look, it doesn't stop. It's not children. a little bit in, in a direction. It's just they go overwhelmingly in, mm -hmm. in a direction. Yeah. I, I don't understand that either. I saw my friend Michael Francis talking about people with term limits. Um, and, and he's right. There should be term limits. Get rid of these people. They're there for 100 years. And now I see these videos that all of these politicians, they were making 130, 150, 175,000 a year, all different salaries. And they're living in five and six million dollar homes. I'd like that job. <laughs> and it's not like us, we used to give a ta some cash under the table. Now what they do is they make laws. They're gonna make a law that there should be electric cars. They already bought stock in these electric car companies. They send federal money to them. The stock goes up. They become rich. That's the kickback. That's the scam. That's how they get the money. And we see it now. People, there are people looking at those things. But nothing's done. Insanity. I went to ADX like that question before. I didn't do yeah. a fucking shit. Imagine if we were, got mob guys would, to do shit like this, we would be getting life sentences. But anyway, got one. Oh, yeah. Go on with the question. All right. Gary Young and rthing.tv. First of all, Sammy, I have to say I love your videos and site. I start off every morning listening to you as I get ready for work. Your love for the people around you and people in general is very evident in your stories. I was wondering if you felt that intense isolation you endured in the ADX Supermax had any effect on your love for people. Thank you, and I wish you nothing but the best. You know, it, it, did, it did a combination of things. It made me hate what was being done to me. I hated some people. But that nurse, people I've met in there who showed compassion, the ADX warden, I'm friends with him, I did a show with him, we communicate, he was a good person. So it made me love people and respect people more and hate other people more. When you want to do, you know, I'm working on prison reform, you're a federal judge, I'm going to go back to Bobby Manor again, he's fucking 94 years old, very sick, and he has a life sentence. You're letting people out, dangerous people, some of them, and you won't let him out. Where is the compassion? Let him go home to his wife and his children. They got to grind out all them fucking years, 30-something, 30 36 years in prison, until finally they go pick him up like a piece of garbage. That's compassion? You're good people? Yeah, I, I really don't want to hear that. Mm -hmm. Because if you're compassionate, if that don't ring a bell, if somebody just told me about losing a son, mm -hmm. I was almost in tears. Yeah, That's compassion. You got no fucking compassion. A lot of these scams that they're doing with the injections and shots and how many people are dying from that. You're compassionate? Don't tell me you're fucking compassionate. Put me in a room with some of those people and they'll talk to me about being compassionate. They'll be telling me, please be compassionate. <laughs> and I will tell them I'm gonna be as compassionate as you are. So it, it made me learn a lot. And it made me learn how much abuse I could take without breaking. And I came close, I'm gonna admit it, I came close. It, it, was, it was devastating, that six and a half years. You know, I, could, I went to the hole in prisons for a fight or something, three months, six months, or whatever, stupid, you know, things. And I deserved it, I got into a fight, I was, whatever. But six and a half years, I don't think anyone, and that's what my video's about, anyone on any human in this country doesn't deserve that kind of punishment. And if it's to that degree, he's that bad, then take him out, kill him. Kill him. If he can't come back on planet Earth, kill him. But don't keep him there and just torture him and his family and spend all kinds of money taking care of him all these fucking years. 
taxpayer money. It's easy to pay that money because it's not yours. You want to keep a guy in prison for an extra 10 years? Your Honor, it costs 30000 a year, 40000 a year to keep him there. Pay it. You pay it after 15 or 18 or 20. You pay it. No, then they'll let him write the fuck out. It's all about money. It's all about bullshit. And it's all about don't, don't call yourself compassionate. Not to me. Don't do it. Thank you, Sammy. Nice. Yeah, you had a, um, a recently came out was the CBS interview with Brianna Whitley. And you were talking about how Gitmo detainees are treated a thousand percent better than these people in the ADX. Now, who's that? The girl from uh, Channel 3? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. I did an interview with uh, people from Channel 3. It's a local news here. Probably most people haven't seen it. I'm going to put it out, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they were really, God bless you. <laughs> and they were really co good people, compassionate people. I liked her. This is the second time I did an interview with her. The first time she was very smart, talented, fair. So I did another one with her. I did it years ago, and I just did another one now on Channel 3. A lot of people did see it, local people, basically. And uh, she's very, very smart, and I like the questions she asked. And she didn't hold back. You know, she said, you did X amount of murders. Why do you think about, you know, being a serial killer? So th there were t tough questions she asked me. I answered them, like I do with everybody else. And um, I want to take my hat off. I give them kudos. I told her when they were walking out, um, if you ever need anything, just give me a holler. You know, when they're doing articles, if they want to get my opinion on things, just give me a holler and I'll give you that answer over the phone. So, uh, you know, beautiful yeah. thing. She's a good woman. Absolutely. I'm going to jump into Sexy it. little bitch, too. <laughs> she's beautiful. Yeah, she's a good she's looking beautiful. woman. She's beautiful. She's tall. Yeah. And probably now everybody was saying, that's why he was nice to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brianna Whitley, we see you, girl. <laughs> Arizona. Uh, J.B. Weld, uh, my uncle worked for Charlie the Ox from Rochester, New York family. Did you ever meet the Ox? Ox? I don't think so. An ox and a bull in the same room? Bro, I don't know. <laughs> We'd be back in that zone. <laughs> <laughs> JB Weld again in the Super Chats. Thoughts on Nino Gaggi. Was he messed up like Roy? No, no. Nino Gaggi was a tough guy. I wouldn't consider Nino Gaggi uh, a serial killer. Um, he was tough as they come. But uh, no, he was more sensible. He was tough. He was goes an usher to the T. Um, Roy DeMeo lost his fucking mind and became a serial killer. The laws, the rules didn't matter no more. He was just doing things off the wall. He lost his mind as a serial killer. I think that's what a serial killer does. He's not killing out of reason or rhyme or an argument or anything anymore. He's just killing because he enjoys killing. That's a serial killer mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. I'm not that. I don't think Nino was. Um, it's, a, it's a special person, and I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist. I don't know what the fuck is in their head. I know it's whatever it is is weird. I don't know what happened as a child. I don't even buy all that bullshit. But that they they would have to answer questions like that. But I don't think Nino uh, wouldn't hesitate to kill you. And a real tough guy. But I don't think he was a serial killer. Thank you, Sammy. Jay Marie back in the super chat. Sammy, what was the biggest score you ever hit on the streets? There's something beautiful about fencing a load. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you want to know something? When I was younger, we went on scores, and I, I never really made a big score on hijacking or anything like that, armed robbery. I made some, you know, pretty good ones, but usually it's four or five guys. We split it up. You, you didn't make that much. But uh, I feel that legitimate, like business, construction, and discos or a bakery or a this restaurant, there are so many things you can do in life that could make 10 times as much money. And it's a lot safer. You're not going to spend the rest of your life in prison. And uh, 
you got to understand business, and it's wide open for us. And when you, Jay Marie, you got a crew of people around you, guys, tough guys. You know, when you have that power of pushing the union off of you, or having so many people go out of respect to your restaurant, it may not be the best food, but they all want to respect you when they go there. Uh, my daughter opened up uh, a florist. I mean, every, when somebody died and everybody was buying flowers, my daughter was overwhelmed with orders. That's respect. These things happen so you can make money using your head and your powers together. And being honest, I was in construction. I made a ton of money. Nowhere near. I could have never robbed that kind of money. So I made a lot, a lot of money in uh, legitimate business. And that's what I'm doing now. I came out. I changed my life. I'm trying to get into Hollywood, I'm social media, trying to make money, trying to make a life. This is rough. I'm having a hard time of it money-wise and everything else because it's expensive to do a lot of the things that I'm doing. To be honest, I'm not rich. I'm getting by. But uh, it, I know I could do it. You gotta have, and, and one thing, I'm, whatever I'm doing, I'm not going to go to jail. So. Whatever I'm going to get, I'm going to spend. Instead of having gangsters around me, I got a team of women, men too, uh, if, if, I can get the, if they fit the spot. Uh, like now I'm doing my artwork with uh, my friend Kevin. There's a lot of things you can do in life uh, and make money. More money than stealing. There's no potential. I'm not going to hurt nobody here. And. Uh, I, and I won't, hopefully I won't go to jail. So I'll live out my life. So you could do that, but scores, they're a dime a dozen, and they're dangerous. You could wind up hurting somebody if things go f f foul, or you could wind up getting busted and going to prison, and what's, the score don't mean shit. When you, lo you lose 10, 15 years of your life in prison, and it hurts your whole family. So I, I would, you know, widely uh, say that going into business is your best bet. Use your head. And Jay Brewery, I talked with you, we talked live. You're a smart guy. You're a tough guy, I, I agree, but you're a, you're a smart guy too. That's what you gotta do. And you, you, all your friends, you're gonna open up like I happened to me when I, I threw a party. You're gonna open up a restaurant. Another guy, a legitimate guy opens up a restaurant. He better cook his food good, he don't know nobody, he's got to try to build a following. You're going to open up a restaurant, you got 20, 30 friends, they got families, you got 100 customers overnight. You got an edge. Use that edge. Great advice, Can you see my feet sticking up? Can we see your feet? No, I don't think so. Oh, there they are. The Those little, little tootsies. My little feeties. <laughs> your little piggies. <laughs> Rubbing on the rug, I'm doing my little dance. <laughs> so cute. Um, Amy McMillan, hoping you and yours have a happy holiday season with her weekly envelope. Thank you, uh, Katie. Katie? Uh, Amy. Oh, Amy. <laughs> I was going to say, that's my mother's name, Katie. <laughs> JB Weld in the Super Chat. When Big Polly left the scene, what happened to all of his connections in Sicily? Did John inherit those in all the rackets? No. No. Um, some the rackets, they did. Uh, Sicily... No, you, you, that's, you know, there's family. First of all, you're not supposed to kill a boss. So Sicily had to hate us for that. They don't, they don't like us for that. Um, you know, you become a boss the right way, you get, you know, through a vote and this and that. When you kill somebody and take over that, people don't like you. They might be afraid of you, but they don't like you. Um, and John, now, even that thing that's out on Netflix, how to be a mafia boss. Mm -hmm. I listened to the whole part with John Gotti. They knocked the shit out of him. They said, John Gotti did everything to show you how not to be a boss. He, everybody, the law enforcement, guys who were on it, who talked, everybody. He broke every fucking rule in the book. Aside from killing Paul, right after that, being flashy, putting people on the spot, the government had told me they were so happy when he became the boss. So many guys, he ordered them to go there on, to look like a big shot. 
on the day he wanted them to be there. They saw so many people they never even knew were in the life, taking their plate, and now they knew who they were. He almost put the whole fucking mafia on Front Street. Every boss didn't like him. Even the guy Joe Messina he thought liked him is caught on tape saying, this fucking idiot is destroying Gosa Nostra. So, and he thought he was his best friend. Now, I didn't feel like that. I felt that like it was a mistake. I never, I never talked like that about him. Not, not, not out of fear, he was my boss. I don't want to talk about my boss like that. But I felt that way, it was wrong. He broke every, he, he really destroyed Gosa Nostra. I said this a number of programs, a number of times, and I still feel that way. He did more damage to Cosa Nostra than 15 guys who cooperated put together. Nice. <clears throat> Ryan Brown in the super chat with a couple of super chats for you, Sammy. I hope you and your family have a safe and blessed Thanksgiving. And now my super chats decided to work. I guess they weren't working. Sorry, Ryan. Any thoughts on Anthony's center getting out next year? That's the guy I was talking about. I thought his other partner is Joey Centra, Anthony Centra. Um, listen, he's the closest thing to a serial killer. I think everybody should get out if he, they reformed. <coughs> and I said, if they can let him out, his crimes are very, very vicious and very dangerous. The difference in his crimes or my crimes or anybody else's crimes is they were against innocent people who had nothing to do with our life and they committed no fucking crime to be killed. It's like me getting up and killing Amina. Oh, for no fucking, well, I, I'm, I'm just using your name as a hypothetical, <laughs> for no fucking reason. She's a good woman, a good mom, she's a good worker. Why would I kill her? It's that I'm a complete and total fucking nut. So if you're gonna let me out after doing that, then I, I don't know. Now, you know, then maybe there's gonna be consequences, who knows? But if you can let him out, I hope he changed his life. I knew, I met him, I knew him a little bit, not much. We, when, when they were with uh, us, Roy DeMeo, they're the guys who killed Roy DeMeo. Frankie and Chico grabbed them, said there's a contract on all of his. If you two guys, the twins, him and his other partner, kill Roy DeMeo, there'll be no contract on you. And we lived up to that. They killed Roy DeMeo. There was no contract on them. We didn't even want them with us. Under John Gotti, we transferred them to Gas Pipe. Gas Pipe wanted them. We didn't want them. To us, they were serial killers. We don't want them. And then Gas Pipe made them, and eventually they got pinched on this whole Roy DeMeo, all the killings and everything, and they both got life. And he, now they're giving him a, a, a pardon for uh, mm -hmm. yeah. when you're sick. I don't know if he's yeah. sick or not, but... We should definitely look into that. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we will. But what I'm saying is I'm not saying that Anything. I'm not knocking him. I don't need him running around hating me. But and I don't really give a fuck. But um, if they let him out, then let Bobby, Bobby Manor yeah. and Vic Amusa let them out. Bobby Manor's 94. Vic Amusa's, I believe, 88. And they're both sick, horribly sick. Let them out. If you're letting him out, then let it, let them out. You dropped your baby. I made mean, a little baby. Aww. She's falling apart. Damn Her dress it. is coming off. Her dress is coming off. <laughs> okay, we have a question about the Joey Merlino podcast. Let's see. Uh -huh. I know. I didn't. Uh, I keeps, he keeps bugging about it. Hey, no, the wax Bria Cotta. Sammy, apologize if you already talked about this, but what are your thoughts on the Joey Merlino from Philly and any dealings in the past? And would you ever sit down with him as a guest on his new podcast? I didn't know him. I knew his father. When there was the war in Philadelphia, I was involved in the war in Philadelphia. I knew his father well. I didn't know him. Um, he talks about rats. Uh, now he's talking about that. I don't know what he's doing. I know his uncle was a rat and they killed him. So 
when you're talking about rats, turn around and look at your family and look at, you know, and look at what you're doing. It's not a rat movie, it's not a rat. I'm not calling them a rat. But you're a boss, supposedly, if you are, and you're doing this. It's a disgrace to go to Nostra, what you're doing. If you're a boss, be a boss. You got money, sit back and be a boss. Act like a boss. Or quit. Or rat. So you can come out and talk like everybody else if that's what you want to do. But I, I don't agree with it. I, I never bad-mounted them. I think everybody's got the right to do what they want to do. But um, at one point, you got to make up your mind. If you're in the life and you took the oath and you didn't cooperate, I take your word for that, then shut the fuck up and act like a boss. They just did a program on how to be a boss. <laughs> they talked about what John did. You're doing the same fucking thing. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't agree with it. I don't dislike him. Uh, I think uh, he's talking about sports. If he sticks to that, I still think it's wrong. That's just my opinion of Cousin Osher. Um, you make a decision. You're going to be in that life or you're not. Um, and when you get that high, you have responsibilities to carry yourself a certain way. And uh, I think years ago, listen, they wanted to kill John. There was contracts on him. The Genovese people, Chen. I mean, because of the way he was carrying himself. It wasn't just because he killed Chen. It was that. But it was the way he carried himself after. I was part of killing Paul. I was a big part of it. I was the planner. I was backup shooter. The guy on the walkie-talkie. And Chin almost gave me a pass. He did. Up until he thought I would retaliate. So there, there's a limit to everything when you're in that life. You live by the rule or you die by the fucking rule. And I'm sure, I can't even imagine Paul being on a talk show. Or, or that, this. Joe Bonanno went on a, uh, wrote a book. After he was added live, they were going to kill him. I had that contract for a few minutes. I talked to Paul Castellano. He told me about Joe Bonanno's book. And they were going to use it in, in cases or whatever. Of course, he talked about the life. You're not supposed to talk. Even if he was gone. And he told me that I would go down to Arizona. I never was in Arizona, so I didn't know what the hell he was, you know, Arizona. All right. And kill him. Okay. You know, I'd have to have some information. I, I was never too. It was a lot, a lot of years ago. And, uh, and then after talking on his patio, he said, you know what, Sammy? Forget about it. That's the Bonanno people's fault. That's their problem. Let them take care of it. And this is almost the same thing, Joey Molino. That's what you're doing. You're putting Goza Nostra out there. You took a fucking oath not to do that. You're breaking that oath. And now you have the balls to sit down. You're going to talk about people who ratted on you. And then other people, maybe. Maybe me. Whoever the fuck you want to talk about. But look, what, look in the fucking mirror and look what you're doing. You still have time. Back the fuck away and be a boss. Or denounce the whole fucking thing. I don't know. That's my opinion. I don't, I'm not mad at him. I don't dislike him. I just think what he's doing is 100% wrong. And I'm going to take a lot of heat for this because a lot of people now are kissing his ass. They want to talk to him. Hey, they want to do an interview. No, I don't want to do no interview with him. If he wants to do an interview with me, I would, he could do it. He could ask me. I, I might. But it's not going to be a friendly interview. I will tell him right now. It's not going to be a friendly interview. I'll do it. I'm not going to hurt you. And you won't hurt me. But I'm not going to, I'm going to talk like this. You don't, you don't deserve what you're doing. You don't belong doing what you're doing. That's what you're going to hear from me. So if you want to hear that bullshit, 
then I'm willing to have a sit down with you. But uh, I'm going to tell you the rules of Gozanostra. What you're supposed to be. How you're supposed to act. Nice. Thank you, Sammy. You have over 900 people in the chat right now. Can you please tell them all to hit the like button? Keep commenting. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Let's go. Hey, guys. You know, you heard a hit the like button. Subscribe. These things are important. They're important to me. I, I you know, I, I love showing people in Hollywood. Well, a lot of people don't like you. Hey, look at these fucking numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Give me those numbers. I love doing that. Um, and I love you guys. I don't know if you were here at the beginning of the show, so but it'll come after. I, I did some work with a f good friend of mine. I did time with him. He he's a tough guy. He did a lot of time, Kevin. Um, um, and we're doing artwork again together. We did it in prison together. He is much better than me. He showed me how to do certain things. And we started doing things. I do part of it. He does another part. I don't like what he did. I do a little <laughs> something. So we were good, and we, but we were close friends. Um, he was with the Gambino family for a while. He got, two, he got a case that he got from the, from the state. I think he got a 25-year sentence, something like that. And uh, he stood up. And he was doing time. And then he got indicted again with the feds. Bro, you know, the government, when they get you like that, and he flipped. And uh, he still did a lot of years. Great guy. Um, tough guy in his own right. And, uh, but he's a great artist. And me and him will be working together. You know, where I... Don't see a line. It's too crooked. He said, whoa, whoa, what are you doing? And I, I do this. You like make the boobs bigger? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, do hey, this. Hey. I do that. Now, we have a lot of laughs. You know, I used to joke. We, me and him, we joked with people and stuff. Someday, if we get together, if we ever do a video together, we're going to tell you stories that we did that were just hysterical. You know, one day, and he'll remember this, if he's listening to this or he hears this, you know, we, I, I had a job as a painter. You know, to, to paint in the prison. So they said, uh, do you need an assistant? I said, yeah, I do need an assistant. Who? Kevin. So they said, okay, you could, so me and him were the painters. So they wanted to paint the whole, whole the whole, all the empty cells, were, it was all, it was empty. So they wanted us to paint the whole fucking thing over. We would be there like weeks. We get up in the morning, it was our job, we get our painting clothes, our brushes and rollers and we go paint. So we go in there and a guard is talking to us. So I answer the guard and he starts walking away. So I says, oh, oh hey, whoa, I'm talking to you. What the fuck are you walking away for? So <laughs> Kevin just cracks the fuck up. He said, what'd you say? I said, I was talking to you and you turned your back and you're walking away. You ask me a fucking question. I don't fucking walk away when I'm talking to you. <laughs> so the guy walked away. Oh and God. Kevin said, Sammy, are you out of your fucking mind? <laughs> oh. I said, he's asking me a question. I'm answering him the question, and he's walking away. Isn't that disrespectful? He said, yeah, bugs us. We're inmates. He's a fucking guy. Fuck him. <laughs> then don't ask me no questions. Don't talk to me. We had a lot of laughs together. You talking to me? You talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, I'm going to end with one more super chat if that, that's okay, and then we'll wrap it up. Ryan Brown, again, we love you, Ryan. Sammy, did drivers for the boss also act as bodyguards? Wasn't Bobby Borello, did I get this right, Bobby Borello Gotti's bodyguard and driver? He wasn't his driver, but he was his bodyguard. Now, yeah, they're, they're, they're a little different. Um, the, body, the, the bodyguard is going to usually have a gun. He's usually dangerous. All his job is, is to protect you. He sees anything violent coming towards you, he moves. If he has to, he kills to protect you. The driver is to pay attention to traffic and drive you to one spot to another. He's in a, he's in a different position. But Bobby Barriello was a tough guy. He, you know, he was a really original originally with the gallows in the war. When the war broke up, they broke up the gallow family and they took him, 
they put him in the Gambino family. And uh, there was guys they put in different families. Uh, Kid Blast was one of the Gallo brothers. I think they put him with the Genovese family. The Genovese family made him. They made Bobby Borriello. So everybody, the war is over. Everybody's in different places. You all made guys. You can't do nothing no more to stop it. The Gallows had already lost. Larry Gallo died. Joe Gallo was killed. Another made guy, I can't think of his name, was a tough guy. He was killed. So the, goal, the war was over. And uh, yeah, Bobby was a tough guy. And, and, uh, and there's a difference between the bodyguard, you know. Um, let me pick a guy. Um, who was that guy who used to sing tiptoe to the tool? Of Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim. With the ukulele. Yeah, with a ukulele. <laughs> now, who would you want? You would you want Tiny Tim to <laughs> be your bodyguard or me? Take your choice. <laughs> <laughs> he would just sing his song and scare everybody. Yeah, well, he's driving the car, singing with his fucking ukulele. A little soprano voice. Yeah, da, yeah. Da, da. So we cannot leave a Monday Live without our girl, Betty Ann, with a very generous envelope. I'm playing virtual footsies with Sammy. Hearts, 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 hearts. His feet, X, X, X. There's my feet, Tony. <laughs> Live and in person. <laughs> yeah, she's a good person. I think the world of her. I had fun with her. I met her, and we talked, and we hung out, and we had fun. And uh, she sends beautiful packs. She sent me a package of... It was a box, a wooden box, made in Italy. The box itself is gorgeous. I still have it. And there was all kinds of stuff from Italy. She's, a, she's really a good woman. She jokes a lot, you know, but she's a really, really, inside, she's a really good person, you know, and she just jokes a lot. So uh, here's, here goes mm, Tony, uh, Tony girl, Tony whatever the fuck your name is. <laughs> Betty girl, Betty. <laughs> Betty Ann Tavano. Betty Ann. Nice. All right, Sammy, let's have a happy Thanksgiving. Hey, guys, have a happy Thanksgiving. I'll see you before Christmas. So, But from here, happy Thanksgiving. And adios, motherfuckers. Hey, guys, when I did time with my friend Kevin, um, he's a great artist. And he did a lot of help with me when I would screw up my work. He, fix it and he taught me a lot a lot of things we decided to do some work again together he does some work i do some work on it and stuff like that and this is before it's signed so i'm going to put them out and i'm going to sign them personally this is what you'll get this is artwork this is my art i will sign this i'm not sure exactly where yet the sleeve over here maybe i'll put it in silver and I'm gonna send the certificate with it. She's still alive, actually. So if she, I hope she sees it. And if she sees it and she gets in touch with me, we're gonna send her one with my signature on it. When you get it, you will be able to see her eyes are beautiful. Everything about her, she's beautiful. What gets me with these actresses and stuff, years ago, no fake lips, no fake boobs, no nothing, just natural. Just gorgeous, gorgeous women. A lot of the old Italian people would love this. Italian women and people grew up knowing who she is. This is Sophia Loren. Now it's a limited edition. I'm sure you gave somebody this as a Christmas gift. They would be in love with it. Like I said, especially um, older people, Italian people would love this. Hey guys.